So when I first switched to Linux, I wanted to use some sort of tiling window manager and I wasn't sure which to pick because there's tons of options. So you've got DWM, Awesome, Qtile, BSPWM, and the one that I finally settled on was i3WM. Now I know this isn't uncommon for a new Linux user, but I do think that it is a really good beginner's tiling window manager and that is what I want to talk about today. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do and let's jump right into it. Now I know I'm probably not the best person to describe what is good beginner software considering the fact that I started Linux with Arch, but I do think that i3 has some of those basic properties that you require for a piece of software to be good for beginners. One of those things you need is for it to be really easy to configure. And if we look at some existing figs, so if we look at mine, for example, I'll just get over to the screen. So this is my configs right here. So you can look at some of the stuff in here, like for example, with bind sim, I believe these ones were here in the default configs. So you can look at this and say, hmm, okay, so you do bind sim, something that looks like a key binding and then some sort of action. So maybe if I wanted to do some other bind sims, I could do something like this. And I believe it comes with some, yeah, it comes with an application launcher. So for D menu run, I believe this one is in the default configs as well. So if you want to run a program, you can run exec and then the name of the program. So you start seeing pretty quickly, there are some very obvious patterns in the way that these configs are made. Same with like setting value. So if you want to set a value, you put the name of the value and the thing that you want to set it to. Or if you want to change your font, I believe that there's a font in here by default. I think it's set to mono by default. You can look at it and say, hmm, okay, so maybe if I change this slightly by putting the name of the font I want to use instead of mono in here, maybe that'll work. And you can work out pretty quickly that it's actually really easy to configure this. Same with like making workspaces and stuff. So if you look at this, you can see, hmm, okay, you've got a workspace variable name and a string for it. So maybe if I add some more strings or maybe if I change what's in this string, I can actually change what my workspaces are called. And you work out, as I was saying pretty quickly, that it's really easy to work out how to configure this because you do have those existing in figs. You can work out a pattern pretty quickly. When you can't work out a pattern though, i3 does have absolutely amazing documentation. So let's just have a look at that as well. So this is the i3 docs, you've never looked at them. They are probably the best documentation for any piece of software besides something written by some major corporation. So let's say we wanted to do something like, I don't know, configuring i3 bar. Click on this and as we'll see, there is just tons and tons and tons of documentation about how to do this. So for anything you want, like I think there's also a bunch of like multi-monitor stuff, yeah, multiple monitors. It'll show you how to set this up. It'll show you how to set it up with XRanda. It'll show you how to do things like change the position of where your monitor's located. There's stuff in here that doesn't even really need to be, but it is still useful for actually configuring i3 because i3 does kind of interact with all these little things. So for anything you do want to configure with i3, it's probably going to be in the docs. And for anything that's not, there's a lot of support online. So because i3 is such a popular tiling window manager, you'll see a lot of support for it on Unix. Uh, I'm not going to say that word, Unix P, the subreddit where everyone likes to show off how great their distros look. And there's lots of forum posts about it on various websites. And any questions you have about i3, if it's not in the docs, someone has probably come across the same thing at some point and it's probably already been answered. And because it's probably already been answered, there also probably exists tutorials for it. So you've got tutorials by people like Luke Smith, DistroTube, Chris Titus Tech, and obviously now I've made some tutorials on it. They obviously didn't exist when I first started using i3, but you still get my point. Because there's so much support for i3WM, if you want to learn how to do anything with this window manager, it's probably going to be pretty easy to work out if you can't just work it out yourself. I know that a lot of tiling window managers don't come with a bar, but i3 does. It comes with i3 bar. Now I replaced i3 bar pretty quickly with i3 blocks and I'd recommend you do the same because i3 blocks is really cool and is incredibly easy to configure. So I'll bring that up on a separate screen as well. Give me just a moment. I should have opened this up beforehand anyway. So this is what the config file for i3 blocks looks like. So if you want to add a new block in, in polybar, that's just called a module. So each of these little things up here would be a block in i3 blocks. All you have to do is put the name in square brackets. That'll say, I want to make a block. And then the command you want to be running to actually generate the output for the block. If you want a separator, the interval for when the script should be updating or when the block should be updating. And then if you want to do signals, then signals are a bit more complicated. 
Like with i3 though, the documentation for i3 blocks is really good and there's a lot of people who run i3 blocks. So you should be able to work that out pretty easily from that documentation or from some of the tutorials that exist online. So I was saying before that I use Polybar now, but back when I was using i3, I was using i3 blocks. Now Polybar isn't complicated by any means, but if you want the easiest bar you can set up, I would probably recommend something like i3 blocks. Yes, you can stick with like i3 status or i3 bar, whatever the default bar for i3 is called. But because most people swap it out pretty quickly, it's going to be easy to find information on i3 blocks. So i3 also comes with generally sensible defaults. There's not much where I think it doesn't really make sense. The only place that doesn't really make sense for me is the way that it handled moving between focus on windows. I believe by default mod H went right and mod L went left. Now I'm not really sure why it was set up like that because the arrow keys were set up to work properly. So someone thought that doing the Vim keys backwards made sense but then doing the arrow keys in the correct direction was the way to do it. I'm not really sure why it was set up like that. It may have been changed by now, but at least when I was using i3, the default binding was that. I did end up changing it pretty quickly though, so it's not really a big deal. I think for D menu run, that was set to super D by default, which I ended up keeping. And same with opening up a terminal, which was set to, uh, not super, I meant uh, mod D. Opening up a terminal was mod return. And I've kept that with my BSPWM bindings as well. So as for the rest of the settings though, with the general aesthetic settings, they didn't look great, but they were functional basically. So I would recommend changing them, but if all you want is a working tiling window manager, it's fine to leave the aesthetic settings as they are. And same with the general key bindings as well. And that's also part of the reason why it's a good beginner's tiling window manager, because you can just jump right into it and start getting used to using a tiling window manager. You don't really need to do a bunch of configuration before it's even usable. It also comes with a lot of really nice features. So one of the things that BSPWM doesn't do well is working with transparent windows. So in i3, when you make a transparent window full screen, it'll hide all of the windows that are behind it. My tiling window manager doesn't do that by default. So that's something I had to put into it by myself. It also comes with really, really good multi-monitor support. I have no idea how the i3 multi-monitor support is this good, but pretty much all you do is plug in a second monitor, set it up with X render, and it just magically works. I've never come across a window manager that does it that seamlessly. i3, for some reason, just has really good multi-monitor support. It also has functioning floating window support. Now, generally, you're not gonna wanna use floating windows, especially once you do get used to working with tiling windows, but occasionally you'll run across really terribly written programs that kind of die when they're in tiling mode. One of those programs is a program called Waker, which is like a data and web mining tool. You've probably never heard of it, but it's this little Java app, which completely dies when you put it in tiling mode. So you have to run it in floating mode because otherwise you're gonna stretch out to try to fill up the entire screen, but not actually put any content there. It just tries to fill up as much space as possible. But you put it in floating mode and it just works fine. So occasionally you might run across programs like that, but generally most things are gonna be fine. This might not be considered a good thing once you do get more into it, but i3 does come with a hotkey daemon. Now I prefer having an external hotkey daemon with SXHKD, but it is nice to have a built-in hotkey daemon because then you don't have to find something external to use. It's one less thing you have to worry about when you're getting used to using a tiling window manager. And it also comes with a built-in way to do auto start. Now this is just a pretty standard window manager feature, but I thought it would be nice to mention it as well. I know that some people swear by i3wm and I think that it is a really good tiling window manager. I'm probably not going to daily drive it again unless I feel like testing some stuff out. But as I've been saying throughout this video, I think that it is a really good starting place if you do want to start using a tiling window manager. Yes, you could use BSPWM. Yes, you could use DWM. The problem with those two though, is that to get them to a, a usable state, you do need to actually configure a lot. Yes, you can technically use BSPWM and DWM without configuring it, but it's not really a great experience, so I would recommend picking something else. Awesome is probably a good second choice for a tiling window manager. I haven't looked into the documentation myself, but I know that on YouTube, there's far less videos about it, so if you do prefer tutorial content, then i3 is probably better, but if you don't really care about that, then go ahead and use awesome. 
And Qtile is kind of its own little beast. Qtile, if you don't know, is a window manager where you have to configure everything with Python. So unless you are really into Python, I wouldn't recommend that as your first choice. Unless you, I guess, want to learn Python and learn a tiling window manager at the same time, it might be a good way to experiment with that. If that's what you want to do, then I guess go with Qtile. But for anyone else, I would really recommend using i3wm. You can always switch to something pretty quickly afterwards if you don't want to use it. But if you just want to get the feel of using a tiling window manager, there aren't many options that are better than it. Now, before someone mentions that I'm well aware that there are tons of other tiling window managers besides the ones that I listed out. But out of the popular ones, and I do consider popularity being important for a beginner's piece of software because if you have a popular piece of software, it's more likely to have a lot more support. I think that i3 is probably the best choice. If you have something else that might be a better choice, let me know down below and I'll be happy to address it. But from my knowledge, i3 seems like the best choice for a beginner. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So if you like this video, then remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, then remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my support link. So that'll be my Discord, my Telegram, and all of that sort of stuff. So go check that out if you want to chat with me or you want to get video updates. I've also got my support links down below. So that'll be my Patreon and various other links down there. So feel free to check that out if you do want to support the channel. But as always, if you don't want to, then you don't have to. But any help will be really appreciated. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platform. So that'll be my BitTube and my library. I'm working on making a tool to automatically upload to other platforms. But for now, I'm just going to be uploading to library, BitTube and YouTube. At some point, though, I do want to be on like Steemit and things like that. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.